Hello YouTube friends! Today I am going to show you how to make a sheer dress with pockets. So if you want to see how, then keep on watching! First thing I will do is cut out the front and back bodices. To get the measurement, you are just going to measure your bust area, then multiply it by 1.5 and that is the width of the bodice or the bodices. I decided to not use my bust measurement just because the dress that I made last time was a little on the tighter this time side. I will so be using 34 inches instead of 32. That is something you can consider too if you decided to remake this DIY sheer dress. And for the length of the top, I decided to do 10 inches, but of course, you, it's totally up to you. This measurement will vary depending on how long you want the top to be. It is short just because I am making a dress, but if you are going to make a top, instead of 10 inches, maybe do 24 inches instead. Don't forget to add seam allowances. So I decided to add one half inch seam allowance on both sides. So I added extra one inch for the seam allowances. If you decided to make a tube top, you don't have to cut it in half like I did here. On this dress, I decided to have two side seams. That's why I cut it in half. And now it's time to cut out the half of the armholes. So this is 3 inches down and 3 and a half inches in. We'll repeat the same measurement on the other armhole. Then I'm going to cut it out carefully. This is another tip. To prevent the front neckline from gaping, I am going to bring down or trim down the neckline by about 1 cm. Now I will be cutting out the sleeve pieces. So I have here a piece of fabric that is about 16 inches long and 10 inches wide and it's on fold. <laughs> If you want your sleeve voluminous, you are just going to add more fabric. So instead of 10 inches on fold, you can do 12 and a half inches on fold. I actually made the same measurement when I made this dress right here and it's super voluminous and big. Now it's time to make half of the armholes. As you can see, the fabrics are doubled here so I will just cut it all at once. So basically, I am going to measure three and a half inches in and three inches down. So I'm just going to curve it. And just like that, and I'm going to cut it out. I decided to add some pockets on this dress because who doesn't love pockets on their dresses or skirts? So I'm just going to trace a basic pocket pattern right here. I'm going to trace it with a marker so you can actually see what I am doing here. But basically you just want to get or you just want to make a pocket pattern that will fit your hand in. And I will add about a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. So label the pocket. It says cut four because I will need four pieces. I folded the fabric twice and then I am just going to place my pattern right on top of it and I'm just going to cut all the pieces all at once. Of course, you can reuse these pockets in any sewing projects. If you are going to make a pair of shorts or pants that has pockets, you can totally make this pattern just like I showed you here. Now you will have to figure out the skirt length. So you are going to measure from your waistline down. So it's totally up to you how long you want the dress to be. I decided on 25 inches. Then I will divide it into thirds and that gives me about 8 inches and I will add one half inch seam allowance on top and the bottom so that will make it 9 inches in total. Width of the first tier should match the bodice which is 26 inches and that is times 2. So you will need 2 panels that measure 9 by 26 inches. You will need 26 inches, the second one is 36, and the third one is 46. And you will need two panels per tier. Obviously, if you want more gathers, you are just going to increase the width of the fabrics. I will overlock all the raw edges. If you don't have an overlocker or a serger, you can simply use a zigzag stitch. After that, I am going to hem the necklines. I'm simply going to fold it twice and then sew it from here to the other end. I will repeat the same steps on the back neck. Now it's time to join the side seams. Simply match the right sides of the fabrics and I'm just going to sew it from here to this and on this side as well. I'm super excited about this dress you guys. This is actually a last minute sewing project just because I made this dress so I can bring it to our vacation in Gulf Shores, Alabama. I started sewing around 7 o'clock in the morning and by 4 o'clock I was done. It's time to shear the bodice. So now I am just placing elastic thread in the bobbin. I already have a tutorial on how to do this. This is another tip on how to cut your shearing time in half. Basically, you have to wind up two or more bobbin with elastic threads. So you don't have to keep on stopping when you run out of elastic thread. You're simply just going to take the empty one and place a new one in the sewing machine. My first ever shearing tutorial, I actually spent shearing for like 5 hours because you have to wind up one bobbin and then start all over again but if you have extra, it's going to cut down your shearing time. This time it only took me about one and a half hours from start to finish.
now that the sewing machine is ready it's time to adjust the stitch length and be sure to test on a separate fabric different types of material will shear differently so be sure to test that out first to figure out the stitch length that is proper for the fabric that you are using I am using a 100% rayon material and the stitch length that I decided to use for this project is 4.2. It's time to start shearing. So I'm just going to start from the top and I'm actually going to be cutting the elastic or the thread once I reach the end. The reason why is half of the armhole is not connected to each other, right? So I have to basically stop when it ends and then start over at the back, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. And once I reach the end, I'm just going to cut it and tie a knot so the elastic will not unravel. Then I'm going to start shearing the back neckline. And as you can see here, I didn't draw any line. I will be using my presser foot as my guide. Here I am just moving the needle to the farthest left so I can get a 1 centimeter allowance. Now that the armholes is done, I am going to be shearing on the bodice now so it's going to be much easier just because it's going to be a continuous stitch. Smooth out any wrinkle. You don't want to sew over a wrinkled fabric because it's going to look terrible. Once you run out of elastic thread, simply backstitch and then remove it and then you are going to tie a knot so it doesn't unravel. After you load the bobbin, you are going to start again where you left off and just continue on sewing until you sheared the whole entire bodice. I ended up changing the bobbins like 10 times but it actually made my life a little easier because I have extras already. And this is the finished bodice. As you can see, it looks so pretty. All you have to do is just trim off excess threads, obviously. I finished the sheared bodice. Now it's time to work on the sleeves. This project, I'm going to, instead of shearing the shoulder, I'm just going to make a channel and then I'm going to put an elastic in there. I'm going to use an elastic that's about a quarter of an inch wide so you just want to make sure that it will fit in the channel that you're going to make so I'm going to fold it like this
After that, I hem the sleeves as well, but actually it turned out that you should do that last so the seams are not going to be visible, so I ended up redoing it at the end. I'm going to create a channel for the elastic on the sleeve because I want the sleeve to have some sort of ruffle detail. You can shear it but I decided to do this method just because I saw Madison from the Style Studio did it and I absolutely love the result so I am doing it this way. Also Jess Dang, she also did a tutorial similar to the sleeves. I basically place the bias tape that is about one half inch wide on the lines that I drew earlier on the wrong side of the sleeves and I'm just going to top stitch it. You just want to make sure that the elastic that you are going to use is going to fit in the channel that you are making. Then measure your arm just like this. Make sure that it's not too tight because you don't want it to be uncomfortable. Place a safety pin on one end of the elastic and I'm going to feed it through the other end. I'm going to tack it. Now I'm just going to sew the elastic in place and I'm going to backstitch a few times just to make sure that the elastic is secure. it's time to join the sleeves on the sheared bodice so I turn it wrong side out and I put the center or the side seams at the center then I place the sleeve inside the bodice and I'm going to match the half of the armholes and make sure that the right sides of the fabric are kissing each other in case that the armholes of the sleeves are too big for the shared bodice, you can easily adjust it by sewing it on the side seam. For this project, I didn't have to do that. It was a perfect fit, but just in case you run into trouble like that, you can easily take it in from the side seam or the inseam of the sleeve. Now I'm just going to sew it here. Then I will repeat the same step on the other sleeve. So I place it inside the bodice, right sides of the fabrics are facing each other, match the half of the armholes, and then pin it to secure, and then sew it from here to the other end. And here I am going to be doing one half inch seam allowance. As you can see, it's looking like a cute crop top. If you actually made the bodice a little longer, mine was only 10 inches because I am planning to make a dress. But if you want to make a top, just make the bodice longer. I kind of seam rip the top of the sleeves just so I can put the elastic. Okay. 
measure the shoulder so that's the shoulder portion all right and I need it about two inches short so I'm just going to put this in here Then I am going to try it on just to make sure that the sleeves are nice and snug. So I suggest you do the same. You have to try it on so you can adjust it before you sew the elastic in. Now I'm just going to tack it right here and right here so it doesn't move. Also going to close the seams that I seam rip earlier so the shoulders are going to be secure first thing is make sure that the the prints are not upside down all right so these are the pockets and we are going to attach it on the first here here I'm going to measure down one centimeter The same on the other end of the panel. And then I will put one pocket on this end right here and be sure that the right sides of the fabric are facing. I will do the same thing on the other end of the panel. Make sure that the right sides of the fabrics are facing and the straight seams are matching as well. And then I am going to sew it right here about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Then I am going to understitch the pocket so it lays flatter on the seam. Right here, go around. <laughs> and there. Same thing. The first tier is done. Let's set that aside and let's work on the second tier. Simply going to match the right sides of the fabrics and then sew the side seams. We'll do the same thing on the last tier. I'm going to match the right sides of the fabrics and I'm also checking and making sure that the prints are not upside down. Now it's time to base stitch along the top of the panels so I can gather it. I will sew two rows of gather stitch, that way the gathers are much more stable. 
By the way, if you are wondering what type of fabric I am using, it is 100% rayon that I purchased from Hobby Lobby like two months ago. Now I am going to gather the second panel so it will match the width of the first panel or the first tier. Honestly, the gathering part was like the longest part of this sewing project but it's totally worth it. Gathers add an extra detail to any sewing project. Now I am going to gather the last tier. I also want to make sure that I distribute the gathers evenly because you want it to look balanced. Now that all the panels are the same width, it's time to join them together. So first I am going to sew the second tier on the first tier. Place it inside the first panel and I'm going to match the right sides of the fabrics. I also like to match the side seam first. So I'm going to pin that to secure. Much easier if you're going to quarter the panels so it's much easier to match up. Make sure that you're only sewing two layers of fabrics. So constantly check the fabrics so they don't bunch up. We will repeat the same steps on the last tier. I am just going to match the right sides of the fabrics together and then pin it all the way around and then sew it all the way around just like I did on the second panel. Here I am showing you some option if you don't want to make a dress you can totally make a skirt. Just add an elastic right here you can do an exposed elastic waistline or waistband. If you added some extra few inches up here, you can actually make a casing or channel for the elastic. But I didn't plan on making a skirt. I am making a dress. So I am going to continue on the project. That is something that you can do because totally is going to be a cute midi skirt as well. It's time to attach the bodice on the bottom of the dress so I am going to gather the waistline right here to match the width of the bodice the waistline are approximately the same width I am going to join it so I am going to place the skirt inside the bodice and I'm going to match the side seams right sides of the fabrics should be facing each other as before if you quarter the waistline it will be so much easier first find the side seams of the skirts and the bodice and then the center and then pin it all the way around I'm just using this clips that I got from Walmart long time ago I don't even know the brand Then I am going to sew it all the way around. By the way, I am shearing it. I am using an elastic thread in the bobbin so it will allow the waistline to stretch when I put it on. So you guys, if you decided to recreate this sewing project, be sure to tag me on my Instagram. It is so Aldo Official and you can also follow me on Facebook. It's the same handle, so Aldo Official.
I post more pictures there. So if you like to join my other social account, check the links in the description box below. Oh my gosh, this dress looks exactly like my dress inspiration, which is from the brand Love Shack Fancy. I absolutely love this dress. Now all I have to do is finish the hemline and then give it a good press and the dress is done! Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this sewing tutorial for beginner. I absolutely love how the dress turned out. It looks so much like a designer dress that I was looking at which was a Love Shack fancy dress good thing about this dress is I didn't have to break the bank. It only cost me about $10 for this project. Thanks so much for watching and be in the know, subscribe and be notified for more sewing tutorials for beginners. I will see you next time. Bye!